Oh God, I can see loads of them in there. Ooh, can you see that? Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about houseplant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learned over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And in today's video, I'm gonna be taking you through how to treat and get rid of mealybugs. I've got a fairly big infestation at the moment. It's gotten really, really bad, and they can be quite tricky to get rid of if you don't know how to go about it. So yes, I hope you find this useful and I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So I first discovered mealybugs about three and a half weeks ago on my Hoya Crimson Queen. For some reason, Hoyas are really, really susceptible to them. They can affect all house plants, but Hoyas just are a little bit of a magnet for them. And I managed to treat that plant and that plant is now absolutely fine. However, the plant that it was next to, and I think this is where the infestation started, was my Hoya Crinkleate. And for the sake of this video, I decided not to treat this plant. I just put this plant inside a clear plastic bag. So it's been kind of isolated in its own zone away from my other plants. But I've just let the mealybugs do their thing for the past three and a half weeks. And now I will put some clips in because I don't know how well you're going to be able to see on camera. But it is not good. The whole plant is looking very unhealthy and it is literally riddled with mealybugs. And this is a plant that I think is going to be quite difficult to treat because, because it's a crinkleate. It's got those really kind of crinkly leaves. They've almost, oh God, I can see loads of them in there. Ooh, can you see that? Uh, ooh, it makes my skin crawl. Um, but because it's got those really crinkly leaves, they get right inside, they get into kind of all the nooks and crannies and they can be really, really difficult to get rid of. So obviously this is a like quite an extreme infestation, but if you just find one or two on a plant, it can just be that, I mean, in the past, I've only ever suffered with one or two. I've never had an infestation this big before, but I usually just kind of squash them. You can wear gloves, it's really disgusting or you can use alcohol, rubbing alcohol. This is the stuff that I get and I am gonna be using that on this plant today. I will link it down in the description box below. And that essentially just kills the mealy bugs instantly. And sometimes if it's not that bad, if there is just one or two, that can be enough to just stop them in their tracks right there. But if you do start to notice more than more than just a few, then I would say go in with the treatment that I'm going to do today, because once they start spreading, they can be a nightmare to get rid of. They literally suck the sap from your plants and they can bring your plants down fairly quickly if they get to this stage. And as you can see, this plant is currently far from healthy. I do have faith that it's going to bounce back. I'm going to try and get it back to the start of a healthy state today in this video. But mealybugs, I mean, for such a long time, because I'd never kind of really, really struggled with them, I didn't know where they came from, how they got in. And mealybugs can come in just if you leave windows open, they can come in through your windows, they can get attached to your clothes when you're outside and you can bring them in that way. They can come in with your soil, they can come in with your sphagnum moss, and sometimes it's not the actual big mealybugs that you're going to see coming in, it's going to be just kind of eggs or larvae. And this is why people recommend that you isolate a plant for as long as possible, at least a few weeks when you first get it, because sometimes there's things lurking that you just can't see. And I'm guilty of this, I nowadays, because I've got so many plants, I am guilty of just giving them a check over and kind of putting them in with the rest of my collection. That's a risk that I, I just kind of have to take sometimes because I don't have a huge, I live in a one bedroom flat, I don't have loads of space to isolate. But let's get going with this one. So I'm gonna pop the camera down a little bit so that you can see what I'm doing. Oh, that's not a great angle. I will have to talk to you like this. Um, but what I'm going to start by doing with this plant is I'm going to just decant some of the rubbing alcohol into a little, a little pot. And I'm going to go over any mealybugs that I can see. It's obviously going to take quite a long time. I'll speed this up so that you don't have to sit through the whole thing. <laughs> Um, but I'm just going to go through every single stem, leaf, every bit of this plant and just get as many as I can see with the naked eye. And then we will move on to the next step. But yeah, it's really important to get into all the little nooks and crannies because they are very, very good at hiding. And as I say, there could be eggs or something like that that you're not seeing. 
And ideally, I don't like using chemicals or alcohol or anything like that on my plants. I've made quite a few videos recently about the use of biological pest control, things like predatory mites and stuff like that, which I do use for other pests such as spider mites and thrips. But when it comes to mealybugs, there doesn't seem to be anything that you can use in a home environment that's actually that effective. I know some people do release ladybirds and stuff like that, but that's personally just something that I, I don't want to do in my own home. I think if we were in the middle of summer right now and the weather was a little bit warmer, a natural option that I would consider would be to kind of create a little greenhouse space on my balcony, release some ladybugs in there and let them do the job. But at this time of year, that's just not doable. And with the level that this has got to now, if I want this plant, if I want to ensure that this plant doesn't die, this feels like the best way to go about it. So yeah, I'm just coating all of them that I can see. Ooh, there's a lot of them. And as I say, although mealybugs are very well known for affecting plants like Hoyas that kind of have a more robust structure to them, it absolutely is not limited to Hoyas. I found I found a mealybug on my bird of paradise before, and that is obviously such a foliagey plant. So I don't think you can ever really rule it out. I've never seen an infestation, I don't think, on a really foliagey plant. But again, if you didn't deal with it right away, then it could absolutely get to that level. And the thing that I always, I think maybe this is how this got missed, to be honest, at first, is a lot of the time you see things like perlite in the soil and you you don't think anything of it. And a lot of the time, perlite can be a mealybug. Obviously, they're both white, so they can be easily missed. And mealybugs also aren't always huge. Like, even just looking here on this plant, some of them are absolutely tiny. They almost just look like little aerial roots on the stem of the plant. So you do just have to be really, really vigilant with your checking. And sometimes doing a treatment like what I'm doing now is, is going to be enough and you won't have to treat your plants again. As I say, the one that I treated, the other hoy that this was next to, the one that I treated about three weeks ago, even now I haven't put it back in with the rest of my collection. It's sealed inside a plastic bag still so that if there are any more issues further down the line of eggs hatch or anything like that, then I can deal with them. But at the moment, I haven't seen I haven't seen anything else. But as I say, the infestation on that one, I mean, it was literally I think there were about just a few little a few little clusters here and there. They honestly, ooh, mealybugs are so gross. Um, but it was nowhere near as bad as this one's got. And in fact, on this one, even the areas that I can't see mealybugs in, I'm still like the bits where the petiole of the leaf meets the stem just there. I'm still going in with my brush and just getting right in there because I don't trust that there's not little ones lurking because there are thousands on this. In fact, this is why it's really important to check carefully because if you look at that leaf there, they're so small you might not be able to see, but there are actually loads of little juvenile baby ones there that haven't kind of formed that fluffiness around them yet. And obviously, if you don't get all of them as well, they're going to turn into big, huge ones and you're going to have to start all over again. So, yeah, being really on it with your treatment and literally getting into every single area is very important. And as I'm starting to get into the middle here, oh, there's just so many in there. Yeah, they often kind of start at the base of the plant and make their way out. So if you are checking a plant for mealybugs, don't just don't just start at the outside and think, oh, it's fine. I don't have to check the rest of the plants. I would start at the inside and kind of work your way out because, oh, it's just completely white and fluffy in here. It's really revolting. And there are a few leaves here and there on this plant that I can see are not bouncing back. Like you can see that one's yellowing. And if you look at the back of the leaf, you can see why. So there's no point in trying to save that growth. I'm just going to chop it back. Any growth that I chop back as well will just be directed into new growth in other areas of the plant. So actually giving it a little bit of a prune back isn't a bad idea if you want the plant to bounce back and be lovely and healthy again which I do. I love this plant. Just be careful when you're doing this not to overload your brush with alcohol so that it drips, hence why I'm using a very small brush that doesn't actually hold that much moisture. 
because what you don't want to happen is pure alcohol dripping into the soil of the plant and getting into the root system. I am actually going to be changing out the soil in this plant as well, but alcohol on the roots can actually kill the plant. So make sure you're just sticking to foliage and vines alone. I sped this section of video up as it took a very long time, but I just wanted to stress again how important it is to be thorough with this. Otherwise, you'll likely have to do it all over again in the near future. Okay, that is the full plant treated. You can't now see any mealybugs on it. It immediately looks a lot better. But the thing with mealybugs is that they can get down into the soil and they can actually feed on the roots of your plant as well, which is disgusting. That tends to only happen with very big infestations. But obviously this was fairly severe and I would say in fact even if your infestation isn't that bad I would still recommend changing out the soil just because again eggs, larvae, stuff like that. So I'm gonna get rid of the soil it's in. The soil is currently very very dry because it hasn't had a water since I put it in the bag a few weeks ago. So I'm hoping that's gonna mean it's fairly easy to get off. I've actually got a couple of sections of the plant here that I'm going to chop to propagate. I think I should be able to plant them straight back into the soil with the rest of the plant when I pot it back up because Hoya does propagate really well in soil. Um, but I'm going to do that just because there's sections that I've lost quite a lot of foliage on. It's looking quite leggy and if I'd like to get the plant looking lovely and full again, I think that's probably the best option. So yeah, I'm just going to put those nice cuttings to one side and we'll deal with them afterwards. But I've got a box just below me where I'm going to empty the soil. It goes without saying that I'm not going to be reusing the soil. I don't tend to reuse soil anyway, but I know, I know some people do. If you have dealt with pests, then do not reuse the soil because it's just going to spread. I'm just going to empty that out. Oof and try and get as much of the soil off the roots as I possibly can. So for the size of this plant, it actually has really quite a small root system. Um, so I'm not gonna take any more soil off just because I don't wanna risk damaging the roots that are there. I can't see any sign of mealybugs whatsoever. Um, but what I am gonna do is I'm just gonna take this section of the plant through to the bathroom along with the two little sections that I'm gonna propagate and I'm gonna get it in the shower and I'm gonna give it a really good blitz. I put the shower head on a strong setting and really tried to get into all the nooks and crannies of the plant so that any areas I might have accidentally missed were cleaned off. You can use horticultural soap along with this too. However, if you've already done an alcohol treatment, it's not absolutely necessary. Now, before I even think about bringing the plant back through and potting it up or doing anything to it, I'm just going to have a really, really thorough clean up and clean of the area that I've been working in. I'm going to get rid of all the sections that I decided to chop with mealybugs on them. I'm not going to compost these. Usually I would say, obviously, leaves save the environment, throw them in the compost, but with mealybugs, unless you want them to spread, it's just not a good idea. So I am just gonna be putting these in the bin. I'm gonna give my potting mat a sterilize and a wipe down, and I'm gonna give a thorough wipe down to the table as well. And then we will move on to getting the plant back to health. <laughs> So it kind of goes without saying, but I'm not going to be using the same pot as before. I usually would just sterilise a pot, probably bleach it to be on the safe side and then reuse it for another plant. But with this one, as you can see, this one's one that I decorated myself. It's covered in material. I covered it in macrame cord. So there could be things lurking in, in the material itself, which is really, really gross. So what I'm gonna do is just give that pot a thorough scrub and clean before I use it on any other plant again. So I'm gonna go in with a new pot. And actually looking at the size of this root system, it's fairly small. So I'm actually going down a pot size, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. And then with my cuttings that I took here, it goes without saying as well, but I've cleaned my scissors. Everything, everything has been cleaned, so there's no risk of spread. Um, but you can see the bottom of the stem's looking a little bit dead, and I think that's just where the mealybugs have got it and kind of sucked all the sap out of it. So I'm just gonna cut it a little bit higher up and remove that lower leaf so that when I plant it, there's not as much risk of rotting. 
And I'm just gonna remove the bottom couple of leaves on this section as well. And yeah, once the main section's potted, I'm just gonna literally poke these sections down into the soil. And Hoya is usually very quick to root in soil. So hopefully in the next week or two, they will take and they'll start to grow and the plant will be looking lovely and full again. Perfect. And the final thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try and keep, keep this fairly natural. I know you can go in with pesticides and stuff like that, but I've already used alcohol on the plant and I don't wanna use anything else. I'm just gonna give it a spray with water and neem oil. I just mixed two drops of neem oil in with my little spray bottle here. Uh, and that tends to be very good at preventing mealybugs. So in theory, I don't think, because I was very, very thorough with this treatment, I don't think I should have to do another treatment on this plant, but I will obviously just be very closely monitoring it over the next few weeks. And I am still gonna keep it isolated and as far away as possible from the rest of my plants. But yeah, I, I think I have all the faith with this plant now. I think it immediately looks healthier. I'm gonna give it a good water now as soon as I finish filming this. And I think the plant should be much perkier, much healthier and much happier. So yes, that is how I go about treating mealybugs. And I really hope that you found this video useful. If you've got any questions, then please do drop them in the comments down below. I'll do my best to help and cover them in a video at some point soon. But if you did enjoy this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day, and I will see you in the next video.